Hey, welcome back. I want to just show you how to solve kinetic pulley problems when there is a pulley that is moving or like translating because these pulleys are kind of weird in the sense that they have no mass or inertia and that's going to kind of mess up your, your thought process about what is actually going on here. So when we think about Newton's second law, sum of forces is equal to mass times acceleration. Specifically when we're looking at the massless pulley, it has a mass of zero. So if that is zero, the whole thing is zero. So the sum of forces across a massless pulley must be equal to zero. Um, which means that in this case, if we have a force of F which is pulling on the rope, you know, we have this tension which is equal to F, um, we're going to be feeling, we're going to be feeling the F here. Actually, I'll just try it once so it's hopefully not confusing about how many forces there are. We have F, and then we also have F here. Another property of these inertialist pulleys is that the tension doesn't change on the cable on either side of it. So this blue cable, it has a force of F uh, pulling on each part of the pulley. So it like magnifies the force essentially. So on the other side, the tension, see if I can kind of indicate that in a different color. Um, like in this cable, it has to be equal to 2F. Otherwise, this expression doesn't make any sense. It doesn't check out. Keep in mind, this is a simplification. This isn't real life. Most pulleys in real life do have some mass. But when we're dealing with massless ones, that's what's going on here. So that means that we also have uh, it's tension in this cable. So it's, it's, the cable feels it like pointing both ways, basically. Um, in fact, I want to draw it a little bit better so we have like that but really what we want is we want it going this way we know that we have a force of 2f a tension force of 2f in that cable and that 2f is basically pulling the mass to the right okay so acceleration is going to be in this direction for the mass block and while we're thinking about this when there's a pulley that's moving and a cable that's moving through it there, there's almost always a multiplication well there is always a multiplication or division of the translations uh, of the different objects that are connected so if you just imagine here i'm just going to make up some numbers so and we'll set up some datum let's ignore the cable that's in the pulley itself but we'll put our datum here and another one right here let's say that this distance is 10 meters could be anything, but 10 meters is reasonable. So that means that this section of cable is 10 meters, and the other section is also 10 meters. So 10 meters, 10 meters. In order for the pulley to come and hit the wall, it means that the truck over here has to drive 20 meters. Right? Think about that. If it drove 10 meters, then there'd still be 5 and 5, and that's not the case. In order to pull through 20 meters of cable, it has to move 20 meters to the right. So basically the translation of the truck, or its displacement really, the displacement of the truck is going to be double that of the displacement of the mass block. And because of that and the relation through all the kinematic equations, it means that the acceleration of the truck is also going to be two times the acceleration of the block. So it's going to be equal to 2A. Depending on the type of pulley problem you have and which way the cables are going around the pulleys, be very careful with this because sometimes the mass block will get the, the double acceleration and sometimes the cable will get the double acceleration. Um, and, and if you have multiple pulleys all moving in like crazy directions, then you have to take a lot more time to actually think about what's going on. Uh, but the important thing is, is that we have the acceleration of the block and it's, you know, the, the, it has two times the force acting on it because of that pulley and it also has half the acceleration compared to the truck, or the truck has two times the acceleration. So when you're doing these problems, again, just stare at it for like a pretty long time and be very sure that you know what's what. And I find it helpful, you don't have to do this, but I find it helpful to just make up some random easy number distance to work with, like 10 meters, and think physically like what, you know, what would happen if, if the truck moved. Um, and that usually helps you re realize which way the multiplication is going. Okay, so I'm just going to erase the green writing because it was made up and it doesn't actually have anything to do with the, the numbers we're about to apply to it. But let's apply some numbers here and solve for the acceleration of the block if we say that F is equal to 3 kilonewtons, so that's equal to 3,000 newtons. Let's say we have mu k of the block is equal to 0 0.5, that's the kinetic coefficient of friction. 
We'll say that the block itself has a mass of 1,000 kilograms. And we're looking for the acceleration. And A, as, we'd, as we had written here, is the acceleration of the block. So let's draw a free body diagram of the block so we know exactly what's going on here. We've got its mass of 1,000 kilograms. Um, we have a force pulling on it to the right of 2F. So that is going to be equal to 6,000 newtons, right? 3 kilonewtons times 2. Um, it's going to have a weight pressing down its self weight. We can draw that up here. That is just 1,000 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. That gives us 9,810 newtons. Through the sum of forces in the y direction, we can really clearly see that the, the normal force is also going to be equal to 9,810 newtons. Don't really need to write out the full expression for that. I think we're okay. And if we do want to calculate what the friction force is, force of friction, um, we can do that up here. We just have friction is just equal to mu kn, which is just equal to 0 0.5 times 98, 10 newtons. So friction force is just going to be half that. It's going to be 4,905 newtons. So we can label that on 4,905 newtons. Okay, so let's see, apply Newton's second law in the direction of acceleration. We have the sum of forces equals mass times acceleration. The sum of forces, we're referring to the forces that have a component in the horizontal direction because that's the direction of acceleration as indicated up here. It's accelerating to the right. So anything with an X component, which is just this guy and this guy, we're looking at uh, right is considered the positive direction because that's the way acceleration is going. So the expression here is simply 2F minus the force of friction is equal to mass times acceleration of the block. Uh, we have the values here, so it is just 6,000 newtons minus 4,905 newtons is equal to the mass, which is 1,000 kilograms times acceleration. Uh, let's bring our work just up here so we don't run out of space. We basically can do that subtraction. We have 1,095 newtons over 1,000 kilograms is equal to acceleration, and that is, when you do the division, is just 1.095 meters per second squared. So we can throw a little box around that. That is the answer. If you were asked what the acceleration of the mass block is, and simply because we know that the acceleration of the truck, as discussed earlier, is 2a, if you were asked for the acceleration of the truck, it would just be two times that. That would be 2.190 meters per second squared.